Well, good morning, everyone. It's a, a great privilege and a blessing for me to be here in Puerto Rico to be with each one of you here every morning, Sunday, 27th of October of this year, 2024. The where we gather to be close to the Lord here in this place because He is always with us. But God has provided us this place where it was prophesied that the pillar of fire would be in the midst of the people. And how is the pillar of fire in the midst of the people? Well, in the midst of his instrument and through his instrument as it has been from age to age. Back in the time of Moses, the pillar of fire guided them. And it never departed from the Hebrew people and it fulfilled what was promised to enter the promised land. All along the way there were many struggles but what was the purpose? To enter. And they entered. In other words we do not see the problems there, but we see the victory. In that same pillar of fire, look, it was in the midst of the two cherubims there. And from there he said that he was going to declare himself to the people. But to declare himself to the people, he has chosen an instrument. The same in Solomon's temple. We see there already something clearer and such a great revelation there because it was from the same place that he declared himself to the children of Israel to give them everything pertaining to the dispensation of the Lord through Moses. But we see that in Solomon's temple he adds two cherubims of olive wood. Likewise, from there, he was going to declare himself to the Hebrew people. Now notice how all that was showing us what the first coming of the Lord and his second coming would be. That above the master seat, in the midst of the two cherubims, God was going to be speaking unto the people. He spoke to the Hebrew people in Jesus and through Jesus. <clears throat> the tabernacle of Moses and in his second coming he speaks to the people who are represented in the temple of Solomon but look now we see all that and now God opens our understanding to understand how he was going to be carrying out his work in this time and what those cherubims symbolized in the time of Moses and in the time of the King Solomon. When you see all that and you understand what is happening at this time, it fills us with joy, with happiness, with that gladness because God is materializing what was represented there in Solomon's temple. And if you are seeing that you are inside the most holy place, you cannot be anywhere else. You are in there. And when he wrote that in Jesus coming the pillar of fire those ministries were not operating but the pillar of fire coming to Solomon's temple which represents the second coming of the Lord and there the ministries are operating and one can see them in action today 
then one can already be enjoying inside the most holy place uh, can, can be enjoying what is inside the, the most holy place even if others do not see it even if others do not understand it but the important thing is that you understand it that you believe it and that you know who is the one speaking to you today after you knowing that as the disciples said Lord I do not understand this when they left him they all left the uh, this side he turned around well do you want to leave as well as we say there is the door if you want to leave because you see God will always keep his promise but see that in what Peter answered, there was representing all the elect in every age where they can say to the messenger, but to whom shall we go? If thou hast the words of eternal life. In other words, we do not understand this much, but I know that this is the truth and that there is a program and you know it. So therefore, we cannot say, well, let's see who we are looking for over here. No. In you we see the promises and we see that God is carrying out and fulfilling everything. Whether I understand it or not, but I believe. And that's the important thing. God has taken us out of this kingdom of Gentiles in the spiritual realm and has put us in the heavenly places. He has seated us in the heavenly places, but you notice that does not stop there. There comes a double portion, which is the eternal and glorified body. And to sit on that throne, in, 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 and to sit on the throne of David. In other words, there is also a purpose at this time, and that is to sit on the throne of David in the kingdom of the Messiah, literally. Everything that God fulfilled in the past ages was what he had spoken that would be the fulfillment of that time. And for this time, it was spoken of a change of a kingdom, which is in action. In other words, it is in process to reach that time where we will enter the promised land of the new body and we will very soon be in that establishment of the kingdom of the Messiah physically. We know that there are some processes and stages which are still missing. The transformation, the rapture, the marriage up of the Lamb, but then we would enter fully into that glorious millennial kingdom. Now, you see that we are seeing at this time, what we are seeing is none other than the third pool being fulfilled in the midst of the people, taking place and impacting not only those, not only the place with what God promised that would be preaching. You notice he saw the preaching there and he told us if there is time to give some trip, then we will be giving that trip those trips and look how it is being fulfilled in such a simple way where in every place we go there there is the word revealed there is preaching and there is teaching for all the people I thank God that he allowed us and has allowed us until today to be in these countries where there is uh, a contact even if it is visible or physical with the people and to have that fellowship in the places around the world which has been a great blessing for all the places where we go and as far as God allows us to go we will be there sharing with the brethren in different countries. And as, brother, as a brother used to say, 
I wanted to go to the tent and the tent ca- has come to me or the tent came to me. In other words, what he means to be here may not have a visa or do not have the means to come. But you notice one goes there and for them it is something so great and they love and appreciate the blessing of being with them and sharing. Even if it is only for a few moments. A few moments of fellowship. And the time will come when it will no longer be necessary to travel, but we will all be in that eternal and glorified body where there will be no limitations. And Arya, he had told us that the time was going to come where those times where we see Philip being transported, how the Holy Spirit carried him there, here and there. And for sure, others also went through the experiences. But they are not recorded. Maybe it was something more marked and there were details that they weren't allowed to write down. We will know who else was transported. What I know is that from this time, there will be many who will have history and who will be in the in those books written that at the time of the age of the cornerstone, in the time of the coming of the Lord with his angels, there was a group that also experienced what the disciples experienced. So it's not that we say that there, hey, that's tremendous, but that we make it flesh because it is the word and there was something that represented it, would represent it. If it happened there, then greater things, he says, they would do. So in this time, that's, that, that's a sample of what a rapturing faith is of what God will do today. So we are going to, towards that goal, to reach all those promises which are for us. There is no other group. This is the end time group that has gone up to the edge of the cornerstone and would receive those promises. And these days, we were in Santa Cruz in Bolivia, and then we went to Paraguay. And they are true, they are for sure a people who love the Lord. They love His program. And they are well aware of the promises and uh, they are well prepared. Although they are far away, well, they are more aware, probably <laughs> more than people who are here. And when one goes and sees that joy and that happiness, one sees there the fulfillment of what Brother Branham had said about that revival that was going to come, where people are going to receive it. They are going to be prepared, not from not only the place where he would be operating those ministries, but from in every place where that ministry would impact. I have seen with my own eyes how that word has had an effect in so many people where it has awakened that rapturing faith because the purpose of God and of course of ours too is not to stay here, it is to live. It is to live here as soon as possible. Because look at that spark. Of a third world war already looming in the Middle East. And any little thing can ignite it. These days things are very hot over there. And we hope that God will move everything so that it can be held and there will be a mediation there and there is a mechanism and when all this is carried out 
We will see how simple it is, how a war can be stopped and how a war can be ignited. God is the one who allows everything. And we hope that this year, at the end of the year, everything will come down and will hold. It is a very decisive year up to December. And each time for the children of God, that sixth dimension is opening more and more. But see that for the world, that fifth dimension is also opening up. Where each time it opens up, and the more we must be aware of those spirits from that dimension, not to grab anyone, but to keep that place filled with the presence of God. Not, not to neglect our most holy place, not to let anyone enter there with a strange fire. Watch over your most holy place. Take care of it. And how will you take care of it? With the word. What did he put there in Eden? He put there those cherubims and that sword to keep them out. To, to, well, you are already inside and you, are, you already know how to do it. Do not let anyone enter where the, the word is sown, which is the one that is producing in you that revival and that trapturing faith. There's a place where I bring greetings from all the brethren, although you are, you are watching it on the satellite, but everybody send, they send greetings, send greetings to Puerto Rico, greetings there, greetings to the brethren. You see, at some point those greetings will be personal, face to face. Hey, I have been watching you on the screen, but you look a better, you look better in person. We will always be united as one people. And that is something that is bad for the enemy. He does not like to see the people united. And he throws anything to disunite them. Because that is his way and his manner. But since everything is already clearer, we are in a new age and in a new dispensation, there everything is clear. Turn on the light, and cockroaches and crickets come out, but he already identifies them. In other words, as we understand all these things, we already see some movement or something from someone, we already know. So what we do is... Um, there, there is uh, some bronze feet that are, walk, are walking. And all that is insignificant for us because we have our eyes, our sight on heavenly things and on what transcends. That is what we look for and what we are attentive to, those promises. Look in the message. Vamos a ver aquí. Let's check here. In this message, in this message also receive greetings from Guatemala. We were there too. There were three weekends. Guatemala, what was the other place? In San Juan Chamula, in Puebla. In other places of San, San Juan Chamula in Puebla, and then it was later on in Guatemala. There in San Juan Chamula, they have a very beautiful place, well prepared. And you could feel an atmosphere like being there at night. Since it is secluded and is good weather too, it's good there, it's a closed room. And although the pastor told me that after we left, 
He was going to translate into their languages because most of them understand the language is um uh, it's called um Zotzil 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 and also other languages uh, also another language I mean it says there are languages that I don't understand there but they have to translate it to that to them and then from that language to another language but they are happy there because somehow they have to start learning since the time of Brother William, they were listening and learning some words. And they were sitting there whether they understood some things or not. And then the pastor was going to... Uh, there was a lot of happiness in the people. The pastor was going to translate to them later. There was a joy there in the village. There are tribes of different languages and with their chiefs and everything in that whole area. But they have received the fulfillment of the seventh seal. See how this revelation and this impact to the heart have also reached them because they are elect. In other words, there is no limit. There is no distance, no boundaries. There are no barriers for one of God's elect to receive the fulfillment of what God has promised for this time. And what? But what are they going to do with those people who do not know Spanish? Well, they will be translated. And the time will come when they will fully understand Spanish. That will be the language of the millennium and of eternity. <clears throat> now, a Mexican woman was the one who understood in Spanish what he was talking about, or something like that. And you notice, was showing us something so tremendous because she, re she, she received what she was looking for, but you notice she received it in Spanish. In other words, everything that was shown in the Reverend William Branham, they were already seeing it fully being fulfilled. The whole life of Brother Branham, his family, his wife, whom we love, all of them reflect, typify in this end time, they typify all those stages which we are going through. And everything goes so fast. Yesterday I was talking to Peter, telling him that I even enjoyed it myself because when I was talking to him about this, the stages that were happening consecutively, we mentioned almost all of them. Right, Peter? Almost all of them running. And we realize that it is such a fast work that God is carrying out and we wish that we do not miss any of them but that we are watching and seeing everything that God is accomplishing because it will be in a moment of confusion in the middle of that squeeze that God takes the bride. And everyone is like, and when they come to see, oh, but isn't there supposed to be a rapture? So the elect are with the naked eye in all those stages, waiting. Like those who are drinking water who say to him, wait, there are still so many of them. Send them to drink water. The water represents the word. See, apparently it was a physical action there. They were thirsty because to send them to drink water it is because they were thirsty. But they were those who were selected were drinking the water and they were watching. May God allow us to understand that action completely what is what it means to take water and look everywhere with a sword there pending or a lot. And those warriors, we are the ones. We are the warriors of this time who are taking the revelation of the seventh seal, 
and are fulfilling what he said. When these things begin to come to pass, stand up, lift up your heads, for your redemption is at hand. Look at the things above. Now look in this message, the word made flesh on the last day, which in 2008, our brother William tells us there, there will be the ministry which will appear besides the ministry of Elijah, he will manifest the ministry of Moses and also the ministry of Jesus, which are the ministries promised to be repeated on the last day, and because it was the end of the covenant, who operated them in Moses, in Elijah, and Jesus, he will operate them again on the last day. We will have in our midst on the last day the word made flesh promised for the last day, and the works that have been promised that God will do on the last day, and we will be hand in hand supporting all those divine projects that are promised to be carried out by the word made flesh on the last day. And we will see the Gwetent Cathedral appear. We will see the preaching that will be there. And there is preaching. So therefore, automatically, the question that the person would ask what we talked about before is now answered because if there is preaching, there must be a preacher. We will see the cords, the altar cordings appear, we will see the part of prayer lines for the sick appear, we will see all these things, see? That is a process. There's a place where he wrote the phases the stages of the fulfillment of the tent vision and everything that is within that third pole in each fulfillment everything is there in details and the times, and what has to be talked about, and what has to be carried out, and what has to be mentioned, and everything pertaining to the fulfillment of each stage. There are things that will only be left, and you will, on, you will, you will only see the result and not the form. You will not know how. Remember, everything comes by the spoken word. Now, if we see preachings, we are seeing them, and we will see a number of events that are going to occur where we know what stage we are in, and we are watching all of them as they are being fulfilled. God has extended his mercy at this time. And last night while I was studying, he was taking me to some places where I saw and understood more clearly the mercy of Moses and Elijah. Do not despise or belittle the mercy of God in this time because it is the last time. He was saying there, they despised God's mercy for the last time. When he was speaking that, there was no more opportunity. But if they are being told, don't despite it. It's because it is still there. Don't wait until you get to that time and hear those words. I think that is what you told me back in Bolivia. That you realized and said, hey, now I see what Masa is. And not only for Bolivia, but for all of Latin America. Wherever there is an erect, there is mercy. Remember that the blood is the sign 
It is the Holy Spirit and it is in the midst of his people, in the midst of his church. There is a place where it says in the bride but how is it there? Remember there is a mass seat and look the place where it was prayed. We would already go in there to a place where he wrote Revelation chapter 4 part 2 it is in the unedited edges, uh, church edges book and there in the booklets he wrote everything about that mercy seat which we are seeing more and more open in that new mercy seat and how the mercy of God has been extended for the Latin American people in this time. It was already for us to enter the millennium. But for the elect's sake and for the love of the elect, he has deferred the wrath as I told you once, I was so close to, I was almost living with him to go, but you see, free will is always in every person. The person is selfish. Hmm. I'm living. What am I going to be suffering and going through all that I'm going through? And after hearing everything I had that was going to happen to that, to that instrument, Shah. It was like to run away. Humanly, it was to say, No, not me. If you give me a choice, the easiest thing to do is to start and leave. But look at those words that Jesus spoke there in the fulfillment of his first coming. He says, unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, he remains alone. Then what's, what's it worth? But he had free will. God, even God had free will. But you see, the love for the people is expressed through this action. And here we are, and we are full of joy, of rejoicing, because not just one will go, but all the elect will go, and none will, will enter the great tribulation. We will all go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, all those who have loved his coming, those who wait, have waited for his coming, and love his coming. But then you see, if you love his coming, it is because he already loved you long ago from before the foundation of the world. And he also displays that love through that instrument. And there, love at first sight. It is already a fusion that can never be separated. We have not yet fully understood that mystery of the seventh seal, and it is a great thing. But when we fully understand what God is carrying out today, there we will see so many things and we will understand many things in which, uh, rightly, we can say, but look how great love you were with you were with us all the time and you have given us everything you have given us and why of the things we now understand many times to remain still is the best thing to do and let everything flow and walk and not to try to stop something they are doing against the work of God because it can spoil something, some fulfillment or catch the water too. So it is better to stay quiet and let the word be the one to do the work and the effect for which these stages 
are passing both actions and even wars. God allows certain things, but I remember the one who has told me, don't worry, there are four angels holding back. Don't let any window blow. In other words, that World War Three, which that's the third war. Behold, the first is past, the second is past, the third war is coming soon, and that's the third world war. In the book of quotations is a place where he writes something like that too, so it's about to happen, but as long as we are here, it's not going to happen. This is an election year, not only here in Puerto Rico, but also in the United States. And from the way everything is painted, if it is a time for certain prophecies to be fulfilled, we are already days away from that election in the United States, where we will see if the fulfillment of that vision which Brother Branham speaks in the Book of the Ages that a woman arose in North America. He says it may be the Catholic Church or it may be a woman. But see, if it is fulfilled there, it will be fulfilled in all areas, in all that. And already then the time is short. But let's wait to see how it happens. Everything will depend on the erect because everything moves in the divine program because of the erect. How they are in the divine program. Their God allows or does not allow and lengthens or shortens. We want it to be shortened already so that everything is fulfilled and we live. But we can say, so anyone goes through, if there are still trials and struggles, then we also pass through with perfectness. In other words, whatever is in the divine program, we say to him, Lord, if we have to go through certain things, we will go through them with your help only that you be with me and we receive those words where I said be strong and courageous so we are not going to faint we are not going to fear but we are going to strive to reach the goal now look there where he goes on to say we shall see all these things all these things we shall see appear and the time will also come when we will see the dead in Christ will be resurrected and the living will be transformed. In other words, all is going to lead to the resurrection and transformation. When he says, see how the resurrection moves. There is a series of events taking place for the resurrection to occur. You cannot say, no, the tent is there and we are already going to start everything. There is a work that is going on fast because if not, all those who were there, then God would have to give them the promise as well. But since there was a work of separation, which would make the ministries of Moses and Elijah, there is a process where they begin to strike the fellow servants. The scripture is already being fulfilled. And he says that in Matthew 24, my, my Lord delayeth his coming and it begins even in Luke uh, and see how the times come when Matthew 24, 45. Matthew 24, 45. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing so, very I say unto thee, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if 
that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day that he looketh not for him, in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint his po- him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is in the good tribulation. Now see that the Lord in that parable, he says that there comes a thief in the night. He comes as a, as a thief in the night, and it is at a time when there is scarcity, apparently which represents those seven years of scarcity. Look, in the seven years of abundance, they are, they are the ages, says Brother Branham. At the end of the cornerstone, there are seven years of scarcity, but there's a place where he says, but there is a hidden manna. In other words, there is toward food. With Joseph Stewart there, for those seven years coming of scarcity, I desire, I ask the Lord, and I've told him that he may fulfill everything in this time according to those times. Because it is, if it is a Jewish age, and God works in the midst of the Gentiles at the same time as he worked with the Hebrew people um, in 1954 years, then everything focuses us and puts us on the dates where we are. And all that would be missing would be little. But that does not mean that it is so, but we wish it to be like that that already that time left over is a time where we can go and see how much we are left to go making preparations. Because you notice that lady knew the hour in which she was going. Even if she was much more uh, she was like in nominations. They criticized her. They bu- bu- bullied her every time. But she continued waiting patiently. Said he said he's going to take me. In other words, she knew the time. She knew the moment. So the tighter the situation the more closer we are. At that moment of the squeeze, he says, when that persecution comes, don't get scared. Don't be afraid. If you have the period of fire in the midst of the people, why should they be afraid? Why should they be frightened? If God is for us, who, is, who can be against us? No one. No one against the elect of God. Therefore, we'll come to see with our own eyes and understand when it is going to be. He said that he will not fail for a minute. He will not error. He will not fail. It's not that we want to know when it is to shut ourselves off and not continue working or carrying out our commitments. No. Rather, we look and observe everything and keep it there and know that you know the time that is left to try harder. The one who is firm watch that he does not fall. Do not think that because you are there ah, I will no longer continue to prepare myself and feed myself. Something you don't expect may come and it shakes you. Ah, but you didn't say that you were so strong. We must be firm in the word because what is to come will be hard. It will be very hard and strong. But you see, the mighty ones are the ones who will persevere. That's where you will know that caribou, the, the kind you are. 
It has been announced that a squeeze is coming and it will come strong. Therefore, in, in wise warfare, as we say, people do not die. Watch and keep your eyes on the ark. The ark, behold, was brought from the people of Israel to the Gentiles in the time of, of Saul and David, and then it was returned from the Gentiles to the Hebrews. And behold, the ark is the word. It is in the midst of the Gentiles. There, they wanted to make new dispensation, new denominational chariots to carry it. And that's not the way. In this time, they have tried to make denominational chariots to take it to Israel. And it is not the way. Look at the movement that there was for Brother Branham to go to Israel. But it was under dispensation that was not the dispensation where the ark was going to return to Israel, the word. But this time, the word will come to Israel through a prophet. Because the ark is supposed to be carried always on the shoulders of priests. And that represents, not there when we speak of the wooden room, where did he, did he rest? They are in the soul, in that little wooden room that was shown in the vision. We already physically see the place. The spirit of the Lord would return to Israel in a man. Now all that is unfolding until God carries out that promise which is before the great tribulation. With them, it goes well, but that well ahead of everything, and when they don't expect it, we will say, but how did it happen? What happened? When was that? God is fulfilling everything as if it were at the same time. And we do not talk things so that they do not get to put creative, especially the ministers and also harm the people. But the elect of God knows that. With a pillar of fire in the midst of the people, there is no problem as to what God is doing and would be doing. So with confidence, we are safe. But look for everything because we are in a change of a kingdom where the enemy of God which is the devil will not want to release it and that goes from you as an individual he will not let you release so just like he still has ground there to work the mind that is the strongest battle there is when that is removed and God let it not happen again, they will see again a Philip at work. As long as you still have that struggle here in your mind, I'm missing, Lord, help me a little more. I'm coming. You don't have any ground left in me, I'm already conquering this, already conquering that, conquering the other. And you still see him there trying to get in, and they are, and they are, they are both in thoughts and actions, and you're also gaining ground, and he's losing ground. There are others who are the opposite. The devil is gaining ground in the life of the person. And so you can see that wrath, anger, hatred is increasing more in those people. But in the elect, it is the opposite. In other words, it is right. 
a ello es al revés. To them it's right. A nosotros es que vamos to them it is the opposite. Terreno. It is us Porque that we are gaining ground. Logo, this fallen sinful body which because of what happened in the Garden of Eden pues, because we are with all these situations but we are gaining ground and we are conquering our own promised land this promised land is the one that he will transform because first conquer your land so that God will give you that promised land of the new body completely Go conquering day by day. What did you conquer today from your land? <laughs> today I conquered this territory. My shot of it. Once you have all that conquered, well, Lord, now I'm ready to go into those treasures, into the promised land. Let me walk in them because I have already conquered what I had to conquer. Now it is your turn. But do your part. You will not leave everything to him. You are brave and were sent to see there are the fruits. And you have been like Joshua and Caleb. They are good. You brought them. They are in the word. Uh, I like them. And they are good. Now, there are times when he was about to do certain things, but you notice the people have to be online. So, in that portion where Brother Branham was speaking, paragraph 49, I think it's from the book of quotations. Give me a church. In other words, when he says so, it involves so much and envelops so much that we have um, shredded it here a little with what we have talked about. Let's see if it's this. Where he says, oh brother, give me a church full of the Holy Ghost. If it's full, it must be filled completely. It cannot be half full. Uh, three quarters or seven out of eight. Or 15 out of 16. It has to be completely full. What we'll do in one year, what all theologians fail to do in 2,000 years. You wait till the anointing of the church already strikes home. Here, the heart. It has to pest there. They go, they got faith, the little remnant. Now, what is faith? That is rupturing faith. After the doors of the Gentiles is closed, that is already closed. What was going to happen next? Oh, God will anoint a church then. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he who is holy, let him be holy still. And God will anoint the church with the power of God and things will be taken place. Now what will take place, see, all that pertains to those days, even before the 30 or 40 days, things will be taking place. And when we are seeing all that more and more marked, then we can say, I conquered my land. Now I'm seeing the results. Help me, Lord, to continue conquering this land because I desire that this land be completely yours so that you may manifest, may work. For until then, he cannot work in you. He does a little bit further. Remember that the Holy Spirit, we have spoken in the previous studies, the Holy Spirit is shy. Now, why does Brother Branham say, when I have my little room, then it's in the book of quotations. In other words, 
There's a place where it says, paragraph 40 on page 5, the book of quotations. Look at me just a moment. It was, he was talking there, showing their tremendous things, but the people did not understand. The one to look at was Brother Branham at that time. The one the Holy Spirit um, was using, was working through. Look at me just a moment. Disturbance in the audience. I will be glad when I get my little room to myself. They will only hear it through a microphone then. Now see how all that is being overlapped. And you wouldn't be seeing the instrument which perhaps in some places it causes perhaps some star. But notice God will then have a place where you won't see how everything is going to work. But from there is that God will be working and bringing the word. Now how will that be? where we will be seeing as the stages are going on because there are things that are already being fulfilled and maybe we will not realize that they have already been fulfilled in a certain way. And when it comes to fullness, that being fulfilled, we are already at the end. But it has already been fulfilled in some way. It's already common for us to receive an audio. We have more or less said, did you upload an audio? Did you upload a video? There are videos too, but is there an audio today? Is there an audio today? Here is voice. It's always the voice. But first, they have identified him. Um and know who that voice is. Everything is going to come down in these stages that we talk about not too deep, where there is preaching, there is calling, there is prayer for the sick, and there are all those things in which they were seen there. Now everything is going to develop in a way uh, that we may not realize, because look, preachings, callings, there is a prayer for the sick and there is all those things. Uh, Revelation 4 says, come up hither. There was a call. So stay tuned. Stay alert. Because things can be fulfilled and we do not realize. And in healing, how many have not got, not got opened their spiritual eyes? They have been healed. That is, certain things may already be accomplished for the elect and we don't realize it. <laughs> all of that and then they will physically take place as simple as that and I told you now that we must turn back because I will read what was said there many things I did not I did not mean to say but didn't you tell me to say that you said it and didn't realize but I told you do it like this there will be surprises to many where there will be that uncontrollable crying of those people who will most likely say, but why didn't you tell us or tell us openly to talk about to, um, to tell us about it openly? Is that well, if it would be like it would be like to rest them. But the elect do not need any of these things, but they believe what God promised. And when they see it fulfilled, that this is it, then, ah, oof, I knew. Now the one who did not, he spoke like crazy and kept pulling down here when later, but why didn't you tell us if I had said I would have believed? So, well, but there will be many surprises. So many surprises. Much disappointment for the person himself with himself. Do not disappoint your soul. 
Well, may God bless you and keep you. For me, it is always a joy. It's always a privilege to share these little moments with you this Sunday, which we share here when we have fellowship around the world and preparing ourselves for what is coming because we desire to be instruments of the Lord in everything that God will be doing, not only in this place but everywhere as well. So be prepared for what is coming is something great for us, something great for the church of the Lord. And those promises are, are for us. So now we speak and see all that we have received, what we are receiving and what will come, and what is to come, but aware that the road to the throne is hard. It is difficult. No one has been painted a path of roses, but knowing these things and knowing that in the end we will get victory, we already walk it with faith. It gives us sadness, it gives us, I feel, resentment, maybe as humans, but we know that there is a goal and we will reach it and we will achieve it. So don't be discouraged by anything. Rather hold on onto the word more and more and go forward. And every time we talk about it because they are realities that we pass it daily in their daily life. And although it is something glorious what God is doing, there are also situations and stages that fill us with in addition to joy, then of sadness. But on the other hand, we see God fulfilling everything. Well, this had to happen, so understand or not, or not understand it, we go forward. And the goal that he has at this time is to take his bride. And she already gave she already gave him the yes. So that's all done. The dinner is already waiting for us there. And everything is prepared. What remains is to go and check that everything is well. And we know who is going there to check the last guests. But see that there is going to there is going to the seventh dimension. They remember that it is where the supper is prepared. But you see, when he was crucified, he went to the fifth dimension. Then he ascended to the Father. Now, there are events that are going to happen because he comes from the seventh dimension and goes down to the sixth. In other words, there's, there's some work first that he will do in those three and a half days. Besides going through the sixth dimension, he's going to go through the seventh. He always enters the most holy place. And there he works in other dimensions because it is going to be a time when that mystical body of Christ would be entering into an already eternal stage in the physical also. Therefore, it is a new work and a new work that will be done from there on. It's a great thing that God will be carrying out. Then they will be judged and then he will return to the earth. Three and a half days no more. But that will be at their specific time. Not when people want it. No one could touch Moses until he did the corresponding work. Well, may God bless you and keep you all. And we are already leaving or finishing uh, we are left with four days to enter November, December. We are already finishing October. <coughs> and practically this year has gone. Already this month of October 
God has given us great blessings and much revealed word. And already, November will be gone in, in some flying way. December perhaps, sometime too. But it is part of what he told me to do. And as far as he says, uh, go up to here, for that is where I will get on in certain things that are being done. In San Juan Chamula, there was a site. One of the sites, and in Puebla or in Guatemala, it was where I saw more marked that in Bolivia. Something is moving in the people that God already wants to be, fulf to be fulfilling. But see, it is the word that discerns and does and carries out everything. There are things which it is not good to speak, but to leave them still and let him be the one who works in everything and that everything which has to be done be fulfilled in the midst of the church and not be something manufactured, but let it be something sincere from the heart. Well, uh, this is a year old Charlie Carus. It's a year, it's a year, he's a year old. May God bless you, Carus. Keep you and continue to use you greatly in the work of God. You thought you were going to run away? <laughs> I saw you here in the middle and it was today that he, he has a birthday and all those who are a year old God bless them in this month that is missing uh, these days and those who are going to be a year old from now until December also, may God bless them also. We wish that the year will come to be the year of our transformation and the year in which God also fulfills all the promises he has for us. Each one conquers and continues conquering his promised land because there is the key. The more you win that battle in mind and actions and in your life, the closer it is to God to carry out in you all that he has to fulfill with you. Amen. Overcome. Overcome every land, every soil, every pinch, every grain of that earth. For we are the earth. Overcoming this, if in the little you are faithful, in the much you will put you in the new eternal and glorified body, conquering our promised land. It has been for me a privilege and a great blessing to share such words. Uh, Brother Branham said entangled. That is in different aspects or subjects. But God speaks to us there are many things perhaps crumbled like this to the diary or as we speak to the diary where we understand maybe things that are not they are not spoken in some more bureaucratic way, <laughs> more formal way. So we always use these moments to talk about things like the, the common things or the, uh, the daily life things. And then we meditate on all that. And rather, what we say to the Lord is that He helps us to follow because it is for us, these promises are for us. We already say there are no other people, there is no other time. This is the last time that has come to us. So let us continue to conquer all those promises that are ours. No one will take away from you what is yours. So fight, work strive for what is yours. The promised land is ours and we will conquer it fully. It is a promise he has promised. 
So today, in the Bible study, may God speak to us everything that he desires us to hear. And may all that word be incarnate. And also in the message we'll be hearing from Dr. William Soto Santiago, who brought us all these revelations, which are news, good tidings, for what we are looking at now. And all that, when we read it, we can take any message from any year and see what, what he was talking about. This is referring to this time. This is referring to me. This is referring to that ministry we have in our midst. This does not speak of himself. Because the same thing happened to the eunuch who said, but is he talking about himself here or someone else? That same dilemma is faced by many today who are reading the message of Brother Branham and the followers of Brother Branham say, no, he is talking about himself. The, the followers of Brother William say, no, he's talking about himself. But the followers of Brother Branham, our Brother William and the fulfillment of the seventh seal at this time, they say he is speaking of that angel who was different from the rest, that we have him today in the midst of the people. They take all that. He is speaking about one. He is speaking of the fulfillment of the coming of the Son of Man with his angels. Philip, when he explained and said to him, look, he is speaking of this man of God. And so he explained everything that he was reading from Isaiah until then. He said, in Isaiah everything is being fulfilled. Oh, it has been fulfilled. Isaiah was talking about the one who was coming. And so it has been for many in this time. But if he says that this is already happening, that that, this, the, the other, in that time everything happened. It was already opened up. It was already given away, and he's talking about him. Ah, but to us, when God opened it to us, he has opened the whole picture, and the Holy Spirit has spoken to you into your heart and said, he is speaking of this one that I have raised in the midst of the people, one of your brethren. And when we see all that, oh, the predestination, the divine election, the choice that you can see, can understand, and you are not entangled with in the thread there. They are tangled, but already you are higher, and you look down and see all those with those thread bands over there trying to untwist and struggle, and they are more tangled. And you can say, wow. Verily, I am more than blessed. You have allowed me to see uh, that you have healed these spiritual eyes, which were blind. And now I can see clearly already a small part, a large part of the promised land I have conquered with the help of the Lord. Amen. Well, may God bless you and keep you. Um, until now, God willing, we will be in the service at 10 a.m. Um, Good appetite or bon appetit for those who are going to have breakfast. And we will see each other again in one or two hours or three hours here. May God bless you and keep you all. See you later. Amen.